Growing up in Kalamunda, here in Western Australia, I watched my mum bring in the daily newspaper every single day. It sat on the kitchen table, and by the end of the day, she had scoured every single page of that newspaper. The way that we consumed media back then, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, is certainly a little bit different to the way we consume media today particularly this area of traditional media. And if, like me, you're north of 40, you probably grew up watching your parents consume the newspaper. You probably did it yourself that way. You might have watched a lot of TV. You might have listened to countless hours of radio. And during that time, you'll have noticed that the media, back then and still does, loves to call on an expert. They love to talk to a person who can shed insight, speak from their expertise, about whatever is going on in the news to help us all demystify it. My guest for this episode of Modern Media is an expert wrangler. He's the director of Media Stable, a PR and media engagement expert agency. You'll hear that he's got some really great reasons why traditional media, TV, radio and print still bring massive brand association credibility to you and your brand and talks about why you should seek these traditional PR opportunities in the modern media landscape. He's going to give you some up-to-date tips on how to get those opportunities. Is the press release still as potent as it used to be? That is one really worth listening to. As well as giving you some tips on the performance side, the things that I love to help you with from a modern media performance perspective, a media training perspective. If you have heard of Nick before, you might also know that he's my co-host on another podcast you can hear me on. It's called The Experts Podcast. Have you noticed a theme about my guest today? Let's get into a discussion about you and how you can get your expertise into the traditional media with Nick Hayes. In today's media landscape, options abound. From traditional platforms like TV and radio to the digital realm, social media, online publications and podcasts, just like this one. I'm Carmen Braidwood, your guide to the rapid changes in the modern media space. Whether you're a personal brand or corporate entity, staying relevant is key. Join me, a seasoned TV and radio presenter, content creator and modern media trainer as we navigate this dynamic terrain together. Let's do this. It's time to introduce Nick Hayes. Good to have you here, Nick. Thanks, Carmen. Uh, good to be here. And uh, no, pretty excited and pumped to uh, have a chat about my favourite topic, media. Yeah, yeah, mine too. It's definitely one of my favourite topics. Can you give us a bit of insight into what Media Stable do? Literally 11 and a half years ago, I was sitting in my desk at a basically a PR company doing quite well, but I was constantly, the phone was going off from media asking me, Nick, have you got a good family law lawyer that we can have a chat to? Nick, need a good financial advisor. Well, is, have you got anyone in the property game that we want to have, we could have a talk to? And I'm saying, yeah, you can go to John Smith, you can go to Jane, you can go to Jill, you can go and do these people. And then I'm going, what's going on here? It's literally <laughs> media. You know, people know good people, but they were struggling to find connections and relationships themselves, and particularly the younger journalists and the younger producers who just don't have that big black book. Now, I'm old enough to know that the big black book, the little black well, it's a little black book, where all the contact and addresses of all the key people were in there. And I looked at one person's little black book. They had the premier of Victoria, Jeff Kennett, still in there. You know, this is how old this sort of stuff is. So, you know, we want to talk to, media wants to talk to people that are current that have got skin in the game, that are a part of their business. They know and work it and talk it every day. You know, when you're listening to the radio or you're reading the newspaper or watching TV, always the academics seem to come up, professor so-and-so, because, yeah. you know, they're the expert in the space. Well, in theory, they are, but in practice, not necessarily so. Yeah. So getting back to your question there, Carmen, how did Media Stable sort of come about and, and come on was purely off the bat that, Media were looking for experts and commentators. They just didn't know how to find them in a current world and they didn't have the time to go and find that very expert because they didn't know who you were or what you could talk about. And what we are here to do at Media Stable is help you present your expertise and put it in front of a media that does want to consume you, does want to use you, 
They just don't know at this point who you are. Yeah. And you're right about the time thing. When you guys burst onto the scene, I was one of those time poor producers working in a very new media environment. You know, it used to be a very plush environment with lots of resources, lots of money spent on support for shows. But suddenly I was pretty much on my own and an assistant, sometimes only half of the time. And I needed to be building relationships with talent to put on the show. At the same time, I was trying to produce the show and it can be quite time consuming. So Media Stable would come in and take over that relationship building and go, yeah, boom, here's an expert. I've got this person for you ready to go. And at times you did it all too well. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's funny you say that too, Carms, because the bloke that runs the whole media engagement side is John Solvanda, who was the former program director at 6PR, 15 years there. He was also Neil Mitchell, 3AW's producer. Actually, when he was at 6PR, I had to dodge him like there was no tomorrow because as a program director, he didn't want his producers relying on another outside source to get that. Now, you know, if you've ever done public relations or in, in hired a public relations company, they're actually there to present your message and push it out there. And they are pushing hard. The difference between what we do at Media Stable is that the media is pulling the content from our experts and from the stories that we're presenting. So we're in a different space there. But John, to my point being there, was that he didn't want all his producers just relying on one source of content and yarns coming from one place because you get it then start getting lazy producers or you start getting a dependence not too dissimilar to drugs or anything <laughs> like that. They start to just use the one source. And you can't do that in media. And we never try to do that. We've never rang a producer and say, hey, can you run this story? We always just present the content, present the uh, expert and give the media the choice because journalists still want to be journalists. And we just prod them and push them in a, in a way that gives them that backup. We're an insurance policy, if you like. Yeah. And you build the relationship so that we as the experts seeking the press don't necessarily have to take the time to do that as much ourselves. It's a good supplement if you are already building some relationships with press as well. So we understand now how it all came about, Nick. Is media exposure, though, as good as it used to be for brands when you think about things like media streaming platforms? Netflix, for instance, is taking us away from free-to-air television. There's an argument that there's less and less radio audiences ever used to be. And there's even still an argument, surprisingly, that people don't read the paper. What do you have to say about that? Here's a reality check. And look, it's a great question too, Carms, because I think that's one, you know, if I was to go back 15 years ago when there was less competitive media outlets out there, basically it was radio, television and print. You didn't have social media platforms. You didn't have the likes of Netflix, Stan running around. It was a controlled and also too concentrated media program, which Really, you get in there, you sort of, if you think your phones aren't ringing and you, you know, all of a sudden get an article in the, the Age or the Sydney Morning Herald, it did solve a lot of issues and problems. It's even more important today, Carmen, and I'll tell you why it's even more important today. If you get in the media today, everyone's producing content left, right and centre, and we've got to do that. We've got to do it. But when you've got a television news piece, whether it be 9, 10, 7, ABC, SBS, or if you're featured it in an op-ed in one of the major mastheads around the country, or if you've done an interview on a radio program that, you know, you're one of many financial advisors out there, or you're one of many real estate agents out there, you're now above on the top of the pecking order. And the reason that is, is because they've got so much choice to put anyone in there, but they've chosen you. So I think right now it's more important to be seen there. And also too, the content is not contrived. It's actual content that's produced because you are the expert and commentator and we're seeking your thoughts, views and advice. And people still recognise that. It might not still carry the, you know, as seen on TV, as you sort of remember back in the days, those ads that would run around. But it does. It does mean that you've got through their very strict filters that they have and you are at the top of your game. And the funny thing is the best experts and commentators that are out there aren't actually being used by media because they don't actually know that we can and embrace you to give your thoughts and views and content there. They're just using traditionally the ones they've always used mm. or using people that have got a better marketing and PR team around them. Now, I started Media Stable. It was just myself and another colleague. 
And, you know, we knew how hard it was to get ourselves in the media or at least get recognised for what we do. And I know that many of you will be one, two, maybe, you know, 10 people sort of businesses. It's difficult. You're not the Commonwealth Bank with a 25-person marketing and communications team that I can tell you, they don't do it very well anyway. All they're doing is putting fires out. Our opportunity as sole operators or as small businesses, we've got good content. We've got good news stories to deliver. We just have to deliver it to the way the news wants it today. And it has changed a lot in the last 10 or 15 years. So my very long-winded answer here, Carmen, which I will have to have a chat to you about refining that a little, is that (laughs) it actually is more important today to be in the media, to be seen, and to use that content on your own platforms. And when you're seeing that on your own platforms, believe me, your value, your reputation value flies. It really does. And and I thought that was a very high value answer, Nick. Don't worry about the length of it whatsoever. A lot of insight coming through from you there. You're quite right. The repurposing that you do with that time in the media is so very valuable to your appearance. Because at the end of the day, if your audience are people who have grown up watching free-to-air television of any kind, they see those TV station symbols, they immediately attach expertise to you because you've been recognized by those brands that they value so highly. It really does make sense. So what's the first tip you'd actually give to brands or people, as you say, who would like to get a bit of media attention? First, own it. Get rid of all the fears, all the worries, all the concerns. The fears and the worries about whether I'm the actual person that the media talks to. My greatest fear is the fact that I'm more fearful of someone else being used than me. That's my greatest fear, that they'll end up going to another media expert or another commentator that would do that. That's what drives me. But own it. Own your space. Own the industry that you're working in. If you're a photographer, you're the greatest photographer running around. Believe in yourself because you've got to want to do this. If you do not want to do this, if you're fearful, if you've got second thoughts, if you're a little bit umming and ahhing about it, this is not the place for you to be in. Because media needs you to be energetic, excited, also keen, also read the state of play. You know, if you're talking about a serious issue, you've got to deal with it seriously, but want to do it. If you've got the want, there is a pathway to get there. And I really want you to say, look, this is me. I am the expert in my space. I want this. So the pathway then brings me to the pitch, probably. Most people have probably thought, I'll I'll pitch myself out to the news before and had a bit of a crack at doing that themselves even, or seen a story and just thought they'd just try and figure out how to get it into the hands of the press. What mistakes do businesses make and brands make and people make when they're attempting to pitch to the media? I'm going to get a little controversial here, Carmen. Now, who's done a press release before, a media release? Yeah. Look, they don't work. Um, <laughs> simply that. They don't work. 97% of press releases will go into the uh, the rubbish bin of all media. And and it was even, it was more visible back in my days because I'm, I'm still from the fax days. And they used to put a bin underneath the fax machine. It was hilarious because the faxes were going off bananas. And all of a sudden, you know, people are thinking, I've just delivered this beautiful piece of content, this piece of news, and it just dribbles off into the bin. And it was seriously someone paid to go by and pick up the bin, put it in the thing and then replace it. And it was hilarious. Press releases are still important for certain reasons because we actually do need the content that's in there. But when you're talking and and connecting with media, get to know them. I mean, I know that's difficult because we're all busy working in our lives, but get to know who you're actually sending it to because when you get to know them and also their audience you've got a much better chance of pitching it. And the other big thing is don't send a press release out to 1,000, 1,500 contacts via the old distribution system means. And, you know, you pay about six or 700 bucks to do that. Send it to three people. And I guarantee you, you will get one of them if you've personalised it, if you've actually connected with the audience and why it's important for the audience of that medium, you will get success there. Baby steps. So I'm giving you lots of tips here at the moment. Baby steps. Baby steps up because, you know, you're not going to be on the project tomorrow night. Back in the day, everyone used to ask me, how do I get on the project? I want to be on the project. Let me get on the project. It's like, no, you don't. What you want to do is you want to do local radio. You want to do local TV. You want to do even local newspaper. 
it's even more difficult now. We'll go into that later. Mm. But you just want to get baby steps and just get a few little assets underneath you so that you can add to your website, add to your socials, and start building up a confidence level that I can now take on the big boys, the big girls, take on the TVs, take on the programs that I will get recognized and seen. Are there any tips you could give us for how to show up when we do get that engagement, be it print, television, or radio? Be prepared. Write three bullet points, three bullet points that you want to get across, okay? That's all it is. Don't give me five, don't give me 10, because it'll put you off. Have three very clear messages that you want to get across and have them written in front of you. Not when you're on TV, don't look down on them. Doesn't look good. But what you want to do is just have three very clear messages because you will get nervous. Look, it's natural. I've been doing it for 25 years and I get nervous in front of every media engagement. I used to break into sweats when I walk into the studio with Carmen and Michael. That Michael, he's a, he's a devilishly handsome fella. I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. No, no, it was you, Carmen. But, it's, you know, at the end of the day, you do get nervous and you want to deliver your best, but sometimes, you know, you're just going, all right, I, I'm not sure if, if I've got everything there. Have three bullet points ready to go. Don't drink coffee. And also to, you know, really do some practice. I practice in the shower. I actually interview myself in the shower my water bill's increasingly high. But what you can do is just interview yourself just to go, look, what are the frequently asked questions that are likely to come up? And then just work through them so that you know. And then when you walk into that engagement, you're just going to be prepared for it. Yeah. The out loud rehearsal, I cannot stress enough. You write things totally different to the way you say them and you will not feel organic delivering this perfectly prepared sentence that answers and ticks all the boxes. At the end of the day, everyone can remember three things. And if you only remember one of those three things, that's pretty good too. Okay. Don't worry that you didn't say all the three things you prepared before you go into a media engagement, because even this much is more than you would have got out there if you hadn't turned up. So you've always got something that's going to come out there, particularly if you take the time to practice to drill yourself on this fairly regularly and get comfortable talking about what you're doing. That's where your on-camera practice is going to come to play as well. You're just getting really comfortable slipping into that zone of genius so that you just practice being forced to speak your way out of tricky situations and fall into your natural genius zone, the same way you would if you had a client on the phone asking you questions about how you can help them. And one of the lessons I've learned from you, Carmen, is also to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And also you've got permission to make mistakes. You don't have to deliver the perfect performance. You know, to err is to be human. And you, the more human you are, the better expert you're going to be. Yeah. It's the stuff that makes you memorable. And there's human element that other people can see themselves in you. And the media love that. I know I love that. If I had a talent who was trying to make it all about their business and getting the conversation straight back to them, and what they wanted out of it, and neglecting my very important audience. And remember, this is where the ego comes from with a broadcaster. If you do anything to make me lose my audience, you're not coming back on my show (laughs) to not put too hard a point on it. But the fact is, if I lose my audience, I lose my job. Media isn't out to get you, but it does help to know what that media and what particularly that presenter or that journalist's nature is. When you know that, you know how to deal with it. And the funny thing with media training, it's not about the perfect performance delivery. Media training is just understanding the media cycle, how it works, how it operates. And that's when you can deliver your best performance. Yeah. When you've had that opportunity to feel uncomfortable, like Nick mentioned before, and still manage to talk your way through that situation. And reverting back to those three points, you know, if you've got your three points prepared that you want to get across in an interview... Even when people ask you a question you don't want to answer, you can still weave in your desired message into that if you need to. But like Nick says, realistically, the stuff you're going to be picked up for isn't going to get you into those sorts of situations anyway. So it's a a very good way to look at it. That's Nick Hayes from Media Stable. Some really good takeaways there. I love Own Your Space. Be the one who's prepared to put your hand up and say, I am the industry leader. 
and own the fact that you are out there seeking that exposure in the broadcast media, in the print media. Be prepared to be the go-to contact in journalists' little black books. And how about those updated insights around how to use media or press releases? Wow. Hold your PR company to account and make sure those things are being done right. And that last one, baby steps. Before you go shooting for that big goal of being on, say, breakfast television or the nightly TV news, start with your local newspaper, then graduate to radio. I'm a little biased here, but I guarantee you local radio can be so valuable to you for the intimacy and the reach that you achieve. And TV, the bigger guys, they are listening to radio to find their talent. They're also scouring local newspapers to find the stories that could use a little more airtime. So don't ever dismiss that first piece of media opportunity as being too small. It can really pay off in the long term. There's a heap of info about Nick and Media Stable and our collaborative podcast, The Experts Podcast, in the show notes. And if you like the tips that Nick shared here, this episode is from a longer masterclass that Nick delivered inside my coaching program, Confidence on Camera. You can find out more about that by visiting my website or just send me an email, carmen at carmenbraidwood.com.au. Next episode, you'll hear from an industry leader at the earlier stages of her modern media performance journey. My sister, Ashley Goodchild, is extremely confident on social media and that inspired me. Not that I will ever be anywhere a patch on my shit. Stop saying like. that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it's been a good and bad thing. That's Diana McKenzie. You'll meet her next time on Modern Media. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Carmen Braidwood, your guide to navigating the ever-changing world of media. Dive deeper into today's topics. You can check out the show notes. Or for more details about modern media training, head to carmenbraidwood.com.au. Until next time, keep on shining in the modern media landscape.